Okay, so let's say that we have an object of mass m, and um, we allow it to, to fall, or we attach it to a string, and we find a way to measure uh, the gravitational force pulling on the object. Um, so maybe we could put it on a scale and figure out what the normal force is of the scale, which is balancing the gravitational force. But there is a force of gravity pulling the object down, and we can imagine figuring out what that force is and determining that it is equal to the mass times the acceleration due to gravity, g. So the force of gravity is mg. And this is a little strange because... Uh, I want to distinguish between the two sides of Newton's second law. So on the one side, we have mass times the acceleration, and that's separate from the other side, which is the side that has the forces. So there's a strange coincidence here in that finding this from experiment seems to suggest that we're dealing with the left-hand side, uh, in fact, it's not, There's, but there is a strange coincidence here because the force, uh, mg, but let's say, you know, we're in a coordinate system where it's like x is horizontal, y is vertical, and z would be out. So gravity is acting in the vertical direction, so this would be mg y hat, and we would have an acceleration here, m um, a... Uh, what would what I put it here? I would have a, a second derivative of y with respect to t. All right, so there's an acceleration in the y. And so uh, the ma equals f would look something like this. So we have this strange coincidence that um, the mass, the, 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 the mass that appears on the left-hand side with the acceleration also appears on the side of the force. This is a, a, a strange feature of Newtonian uh, mechanics. So we won't deal with that right now. All we care about is that the gravitational force is the mass times the acceleration. And that's, we want to make sure we understand, that's about the right-hand side of ma, MA equals f if the left-hand side is the inertial side and the right-hand side involves forces. So let's start applying this and, and see how we can understand uh, how to determine the dynamics of systems that have forces acting on them. So let's do a simple example where we have the mass m, or let's, let's be specific, let's say m star, the object of mass m star, that's like a painting or a plant, and we hang it to the ceiling, and there's a string there, and uh, we can ask, well, what's the tension in the string? The string tension it constitutes a force which is holding the object up. You know, if we cut the string, the object will, of course, accelerate downwards because there's a force acting on the object, which is the force of gravity. So one thing that we can do is, so the first thing to recognize is that this principle applies in trying to understand, trying to understand the dynamics of the system. MA equals F is the equation that governs the behavior of the system. So we could, for example, do what's called a, a free body diagram where we pull the object out. In this case, it's fairly straightforward. There's really, uh, there are two forces acting on the object. It's, it's not that difficult, but we could just uh, pull it out. And in, in trying to apply this, we can make draw a diagram called a free body diagram that involves all of the forces acting on the object. So the obvious force here is the force of tension, which we don't have. Let's call it, let's label it T. And then there's a force mg, rather m star g in this case. And we know what that is, because m star, uh, m star, the mass is given as m star, and we know g, that's a known constant, but we don't know the tension. So that's the free body diagram in this case. And from the free body diagram, we can just read off the forces. So we can construct the right-hand side. So we want to apply ma equals f. Now notice that this is, this is a vector equation. But the only interesting component is the vertical component. And so uh, the vertical component has 
two forces. One is positive and one is negative, or that's a convention. So we could say that's negative and that's positive. It doesn't really matter, but we have to stick to our convention. Um, but the usual convention is that up is positive, down is negative. And so we'll put the forces in as T minus M star G, and we've, we're done with the right-hand side of MA equals F. Now we have to figure out the left-hand side. How is the object moving? In other words, what's its acceleration? Well, it's a hanging plant or a painting, which is not accelerating. And so that must be zero. And so that principle now determines that the tension is in fact equal to the force of gravity.